How many times have you said, Lord, I've about had all I can take? That is, you have reached your saturation limit. Tony Broom Ministries welcomes you for the following sermon with an unusual two-word title, Saturation Level. Some people are upset because they go to a church like ours and everybody starts praying at one time. They say, what in the world is all this? They don't understand that when somebody calls on you to pray, they think one person is supposed to pray. But we all pray at the same time. And we serve a God that's big enough to hear all of us. He's a good God. Some of you in the other session that we had, we are talking about tools and I brought up about blind people using tools and you still haven't gotten that. I see, said the blind man, as he picked up his hammer and saw. Now I'm a little concerned that you haven't gotten it yet. And I refrain myself or at least hesitate to tell you that I've already told you this before about Adam and Eve. But since you're a little slow about getting things and since we're in the senior department and you don't remember what I told you so I'll tell you again with Adam and Eve we always wonder about the fruit they ate. What was it? With Adam and Eve it's not the apple on the tree. The problem is the pear on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> you got that one. Hot diggity dog diggity, huh? What you do to me? The problem is not the apple on the tree, it's the pear on the ground. Well, I was going to tell another one on me and Ernie, but he's not here today. They had something to come up, but since we love them so good and they're such friends, I'll tell it anyway. <laughs> Brother Ernest and I found out recently, they told us that they were building commodes higher than before, taller than before. And we said, well, that's all right, but at least you could include a free step stool. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Yeah. I better preach instead of metal. We are quick to make sure that our automobile is full of fuel. No matter how high the price is, you just have to pay it, keep putting it in there. I'm mighty afraid that as Christians we are allowing ourselves to run low on fluids and oil. This message has the objective of raising our saturation level. Saturation is how much you can take without running over. Sometimes you say, well, I just can't take much more of the grandkids without boiling over. I'm at my saturation level. We need to up our saturation level as Christians. It has to do a lot with the presence of the Lord. Your saturation level has to do with the Lord's presence. His presence is so important. If I had anything in my Christian life, that if I just had one thing to choose, what would you choose? It wouldn't be tongues. It wouldn't be prophecy. As important as all that is, I want the presence of the Lord. More than anything else in this world, I love His presence. And His presence is so real. The presence of the Lord is so important. Moses was in the Lord's presence as much as anyone. He even said, Lord, if Your presence doesn't go with me, I don't want to go. Exodus chapter 33 verse 15. If your presence does not go with us, don't even carry us up there. I don't want to go. Two times Moses was on the mountain with God for 40 days and 40 nights. He did not eat food or drink water. As far as we know, other than our Lord Himself, He is the only human being who ever did such. The first time in Exodus chapter 24, Moses goes up to God and receives the pattern and instructions for the building of the tabernacle of the congregation. All this meticulous thing, every thread, every covering, every tassel, every thing that you clamp it down with, every piece of furniture in the tabernacle, everything was given to him in detail. And he worked hard to write all this down and he listened to God's instructions and God said several times, even in the New Testament, the book of Hebrews, He said, be sure that you build it according to the pattern which was shown to you in the mountain. 
God gives him the, all the details of the institution of the Levitical priesthood, the priest garments, and how the ministry would function. He gave him all this in detail when he was on the mountain with God the first time. God talks with him and instructs him all the way until chapter 32. By this time, the children of Israel had grown weary and impatient. Up, they said to Aaron, make us gods to go before us. For as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has become of him. They make the golden calf and sing and dance before it. Moses must have wondered why God quit talking all of a sudden. God was there with Moses and he was giving him all this instruction, but at the same time, God knows everything that's going on. God's not like us. We're in a one-way conversation. We can only handle one thing at one time. And I know women are a little different. They can do five things at one time. <laughs> they can keep the pot on the stove. They can talk on the phone. They can watch two or three children. And men can't do that. But as humans, we are limited as what we can do. But God, He can talk to Moses and be fully engaged with talking to Moses. But yet at the same time, the part of God can be boiling over as he sees the sin of the children of Israel. God abruptly stops talking with Moses and orders him to go down and take care of the situation. Their sin was so severe that God threatened to wipe them out in a moment. In fact, he told Moses, you let me alone. Let me alone that I may consume them as in a moment. Moses feared to return to the Lord to the mountain right away. But instead he sought him from a lowly place, beseeching him to forgive the sin of the people. The second time Moses goes up to God is in Exodus chapter 34. God reiterates the basic commands of the law of His people. This time, without so much instruction detail, Moses has time to bask in God's presence. The second time on the mountain, something happened to that man. I've tried to teach it. I've tried to preach sermons about it. And I cannot articulate I cannot put into words what I feel about this thing that something happened to that man on that mountain. Something happened to him that his life was never the same. When he was in the presence of God, basking in God's presence, not so labored with the detail of the tabernacle of the congregation, but he had time to be in the presence of God. You can be in God's presence, but if your mind is on your bank account, your mind is on the stocks, your mind is on what's going on, even in ministry, you can be tied up, and tangled up, and all bound up. Ministry is important, but nothing is important as the presence of God. Amen. Moses was basking in God's presence. Up goes his saturation level. The glory of God came upon this man. To the point that the glory of God shone on his face. Moses didn't even know it. The people were so afraid of him that they ran away from him. He even had to put a veil over his face while he talked to the people and remove it when he went into the tabernacle to speak with God. That's in Exodus chapter 34 verses 29 to 35. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 teaches that if the temporary shining on Moses' face was glorious, that the glory of Christ is more glorious. Thank God for the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the foundation of the new. Pastor Ronnie and myself are probably two of our pastors that preach most from the Old Testament. But you can't stay in Old Covenant mentality. So many Christians are bound in old covenant mentality. And they haven't graduated into the new covenant. This is what the old covenant was made for. So that it would bring forth the new. That which we live in now. Our Calvary purchase rights. Our place that we are in Jesus Christ. Yes, Moses' face was glorious and the light of God shone on his face, but it's nothing to be compared with the glory that we have in Jesus Christ as sons and daughters of the Most High God. If the glory that shone on Moses' face was glorious, the glory of Christ is even more glorious. But even now, when Moses is read, the veil is still upon their hearts. If all you're doing is hanging around in law and 
legislation and legalism and you're there in that glory of Moses which is good but it's temporary it's only there for a temporary covering the sacrifices the atonement that they had then never really took away sin it was only a temporary thing the tabernacle all that beautiful furniture that he was instructed to make and they labored and they made that and they carried it throughout the wilderness all that was just a temporary thing that pointed to that which was to come. When you read Moses, the veil is still on their hearts. Yet the veil is done away in Christ. One of the greatest things that happened when Jesus Christ was on the cross, when He died, the veil in the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. Now we have freedom and liberty to go into the presence of God without any restraint, without any reproach. We have, praise God, liberty to go into the presence of God. Amen. 2 Corinthians 3.16 Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. What was that song? Let the veil down and let the glory come down. Let, take the veil up and let the glory come down. The veil is taken away in Jesus Christ. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We have power in the Spirit of God to remove the veil from our hearts, to remove the veil from our face, that the glory of God may shine. We all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. We are changed from glory, the glory of the old covenant, as good as it was, to the glory of the new covenant, as good as it is, which will never pass away. We're changed from glory to glory by the image, into that same image. We're all to be made into the image of Jesus Christ. They say, that's Tony, that's just his ways. Well, I don't want it to be just my ways. If my ways are not pleasing to God, I want God to change my ways. If I'm not pleasing to God, I want God to work on me and I want Him to continue to conform me to the image of Jesus Christ. The presence of God, our saturation level, it has to come up and we must be more aware of the presence of God. Priesthood. Psalm 133, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. What's that talking about? That means your family getting along, but it means a whole lot more than that. Because your family getting along is a physical thing. But what he's talking about here is a spiritual thing, a supernatural thing. What he's talking about here is what you saw this morning. The Spirit of God moving among His people. His people didn't have to be coached. They didn't have to be prodded. They didn't have to be doing anything. They just moved according to the dictates of the Holy Ghost. They came to the altar. They went to the seat. They did whatever God wanted them to do. It's a moving of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Very seldom do we even have to tell people what they should do. We're not here to tell you what to do. We're here to lead you into the presence of God. And He'll tell you what to do. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard. Even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments. It's like that gushy anointing oil that they poured on him. That's what the glory of God is all about. That's what getting together and getting along the Spirit of Christ and the glory of God manifesting self, Himself to the point it gets in your clothes, it gets in your hair, it gets in your heart, it gets in your life, it gets in your feet, it gets in your hands, it gets all over you. That's what the Spirit of God does. That's what the presence of God does. When they poured that oil on that man, it went all down his head, went all down his beard, went all down into his garments. The presence of God has to be more than a one-time Christian on Sunday morning. It has to be something that's real in your life every day of the week. The presence of God is something you wake up with, something you lay down with, something you live with all day. The presence of God is more than just religion. It's a relationship with the living God through Jesus Christ. It's like the dew of Hermon. Hermon is said to be the highest mountain in Israel. 
It's like the dew of Hermon, and as a dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. That holy anointing. That makes you want to sing Jesus. Jesus, holy and anointed one, as we did today, because He is a holy and anointed one. He is the one that anoints us with the spirit of gladness. His presence, it gets in your life. It gets in your feet. It gets in your clothes. It gets all over you. I don't mean to be too religiosity about this thing, but we need to get back to the point of the old time saints. We need to get to the point where somebody picks up a garment that we had on. They ought to be healed by the power of God. Why do you think that God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul? So that from his body were brought into the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Acts chapter 19 verse 11 and 12. Why do you think that happened? Because his saturation level was high and he preached under the anointing. He walked in the anointing. He lived in the anointing and they would just bring a cloth from his body where somebody was sick and the devil said, I can't stand it. I gotta go out. The disease said, I can't stand it. I gotta go out. We need to get back to the Holy Ghost. We need to get back to the baptism. We need to get back to the sanctified life. We need to get back to people. When you come into the presence, they fall and they get saved. They have to get right with God or they have to get out one or the other. You say, that's wonderful. That happened to Wigglesworth. That happened to John G. Lake. That happened to Mother Edder. That happened to William Booth. That happened to Charles Wesley. That's wonderful back then. No, God wants to make a Wigglesworth out of you. God wants to make a Moses out of you. I know there's not but one Moses. But if God did it for Moses, if He did a temporary thing for Moses, He can do a permanent thing for you and I. Good God, I read it. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You are a chosen generation. God wants to make a powerhouse out of you. He wants to make a healer out of you. He wants to make a restorer out of you. Didn't he say that in the last days he would build up the past to restore the past to dwell in? Well, how's he going to do it? He can't raise Wigglesworth from the dead. He can't raise these people. He can, but that's not the way he's going to do it. He's going to do it through you and I. They work for God and they live for God in their day. This is your day. This is your day to make a difference in the life of some young person. This is your day to make a difference in the life of some older person. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. Just like Aaron in the oil coming down in his clothes and the presence of God. And just like Paul being in the anointing of God when handkerchiefs and aprons were brought from his body. It didn't say that God wrought miracles because Paul was special. It said God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. And if he can write special miracles by the hand of Paul, then he can rock and work special miracles by your hands and my hands. Because the Bible still says that they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I know it looks like an impossibility. You look, look, look at us. We old goats about half ready to die. Our hands are swollen up. Our knees are stove up. And our head hurts. Our feet stinks. Mom and law done moved in for the summer. Everything bad happened to us. I don't care what happened. God's word is still the truth. You are a royal priesthood of believers. You are a holy nation. You are a peculiar people. It's not just Israel. God worked through Israel, but they rejected Him. They rejected the Messiah. And now He says, you are that holy nation. You, not just white folks, not just black folks, not just Americans all over the world. John said, I saw them, every tribe, nation, and tongue from all over the world. We made kings and priests to our God. A peculiar and owned people that you should show forth the praises of Him who have called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. We praise God for the presence of God. We praise God for the anointing of God. We praise God because of that saturation level. We need it so much. And we praise Him because He has given us the power to take forth this gospel into all the world. And we have the power of God to make it work. The Bible tells us that we are that generation. We are that chosen people. 
We are that holy nation. And we praise Him. And we show forth the praises of Him who has called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. We praise God and we show forth that God is the one who has given us this opportunity to share the Word of God, this marvelous light that He's called us out into. And we have power. Jesus said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. John chapter 20 verse 22. Tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Luke chapter 24 verse 49. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Romans 8 teaches that he who raised up Christ from the dead now dwells in our mortal bodies. It's not just a spirit way off somewhere, but the same one who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in your body right now. You say, I don't feel it. He's there whether you feel Him or not. And you know He's there and you believe Him and you acknowledge Him. Before too long, you will feel Him. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 says that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost who is in you, who you have from God. And you don't even belong to yourself anymore. We need to realize there's a man in here. There's a Holy Ghost who lives in me. I need to not be my own boss anymore because he's my boss. He tells me what to do. He tells me what to go. He tells me what to wear. He tells me that I'm his own. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he lets me know I'm his very own. So how do we up our saturation level? How do we up our saturation level? It's just simple and I'm glad it is. Because if it gets too complicated, I'm left out. Acknowledge God's presence wherever you are. It works. I'm not trying to put a mechanical switch on God's power. It's more than a mechanical switch. It's a supernatural switch. You don't believe it? And even if you do believe it, let's try it right now. You acknowledge God's presence. You don't have to do it out loud. You can if you want to. You don't have to do it out loud. Just acknowledge God's presence wherever you are. Lord, I acknowledge your presence. I acknowledge your presence in my body. I acknowledge your presence in my being. I acknowledge your presence on this stage. Where that go light came on, light freaked the woman out this morning. She said, does that mean go? Does that mean go right now? I acknowledge your presence in this place, in this sanctuary, in our brothers and sisters. I acknowledge your presence. Now you don't tell me, brothers and sisters, that you don't feel something. You don't know something. You acknowledge God's presence. Allow God to manifest Himself to you. John chapter 14, verse 21. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved to my Father. I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Just by having God's Word, just by going by God's Word, you will have His presence and His person manifested to you. Verse 23 says that we, the Father and the Son, will come unto Him and make our abode with Him. He will manifest Himself to you. You get somewhere and get you a cup of coffee. Or if your religion don't allow you to drink coffee, drink juice or water or something. You get you a drink somewhere, a uh, soft drink by the way, and you get that thing and you get with the Lord and you start acknowledging His presence. You start praising Him for His Word and He will manifest Himself to you. Yeah. He don't come out of the throne, out of the sky and appear to you like that. He can, but He doesn't have to do that. His presence will be so real to you and He manifests Himself. Avail yourself of God's presence and power. How do you do that? Well, Paul said, be filled with the Spirit. You're filled with the Spirit. You acknowledge His presence. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 and 19. Seven times a day do I praise you, O Lord. Hallelujah. That's a good thing to say when the bad word comes up in your mind. You know, you don't say that no more. You don't live like that no more. But uh, some holy saints say they never say a bad word. Tony ain't got there yet. I don't like it. Sometimes it comes up in my mind. And I have to say, seven times a day do I praise you, O Lord. Hallelujah. You get the word of God in your mind. And it kicks the devil out. Sing to yourself. Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and sing and make melody to your heart. Your saturation level goes up. 
Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, the last part of verse 9, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. He didn't say I glory in sickness. He said I glory in my infirmities, my hardships, the things that are coming on me. I don't understand it. All my persecution. He said I'm going to praise God anyway. And my saturation level is going up. Paul tells Timothy to stir up the gift of God that is in you. Don't let it just lay there. Stir it up. Stir it up, the gift of God that's in you. He's already there. It's already there. You received it. You got saved. You got born again. You got sanctified. You got baptized in the Holy Ghost. The initial evidence of speaking in tongues. It's already there. All you got to do is stir it up. The gift of Kikabah. You stir up the gift of God that's in you. And your saturation level goes up. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. James says, draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Well, how do you do that? We've been talking about it. You just acknowledge God's presence. You praise Him. You start worshiping Him. And the closer you get to Him, the closer He gets to you. Draw near to God. He will draw near to you. James chapter 4, the first part of verse 8. John says, but you have an unction, an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. He didn't say you know everything. He says you know all things. What does that mean? You know that God's good and the devil's bad. That's all you got to know. Yeah. Adam and Eve, they were already knew what was good. But the devil deceived them into thinking you need to know good and evil. No, they didn't. Didn't need to know evil. They knew all they need to know. And he said you know all you need to know. You have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things, 1 John 2.20. And verse 27 says that the anointing which you have received of Him abides in you. He is in you. That's your saturation level. He is in you. Start depending more on His presence. Start being more aware of His presence. You say, well, I just don't understand why some saints seem to be doing so well and I'm just immediately marrying and going along and dragging along. You start acknowledging God's presence. And before you know it, your saturation level will be gone up immensely. Father, we thank You for the Word. We thank You, God, that we can have our saturation level picked up. And we need it in this late hour which we live. So much evil is abounding on every hand. Up our saturation level, Lord. Help us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Having on the whole armor of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And watching thereunto with all supplication and prayer for all saints. Help us, Lord, to do that and to be mindful of your soon coming. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hopefully, this sermon has caused us to up our saturation level and become more aware of the presence of the Lord. This has been a Tony Broom Ministries production.